I'd like to share a passage with you from the Shulchan Aruch uh, law code. Um, but the passage is ostensibly about law, but I think it really is about coping with tragedy and the ways that sometimes we're inside and sometimes we're outside of that experience. So the laws are the laws of Tisha B'Av, and one of the laws is that Haroe are Yehuda b'chorbanan, Omer are kodshecha hayu midbar, the Korea. One who sees the cities of Judah in ruin says, your holy cities are a wilderness, and then tears his or her garment. One who sees Jerusalem in ruin says, Zion has become a wilderness, a desolation, and tears his or her garment. And one who sees the temple, she or he says, our holy house, our glory, where our ancestors praise God has been consumed by fire and all that was dear to us is ruin and tears her or his garment. And if you see the cities around Jerusalem and then you see Jerusalem and then you see the temple, each time you tear a bit more of your clothing as a sign of mourning. The vantage point of the author of this law is of an outsider, someone who comes to Jerusalem from outside of it. And coming from outside, you're overcome by the destruction that you see first in the area outside of Jerusalem, and then Jerusalem, and then the Temple Mount. And so you need to react because you're coming from the world where things look no normal, but suddenly you're in Jerusalem and you see what the author imagines as ruins. And to show on your body the feeling that you have, that there is a tear in the heart of the world, you tear your clothes. Literally, you wear your feelings on your garments. For us this year, we're not outside of a tragedy, but we are inside of it. There's no one in the world who comes as a pilgrim to this time. We are all inside. While our clothes are not torn, for many of us, our hearts are. Of course, there are many differences between the destruction of the temples in Jerusalem, the end of political independence for the Jews for 2,000 years, and this time of coronavirus. You really can't compare them. Tisha B'Av marks many tragedies in our history. According to tradition, it's the day that the spies returned with a bad report, when the Battle of Betar was lost, when the Jews were expelled from England, and then later Spain. Each one of these times was unique, and each one deserves its own kind of contemplation, a consideration of the specifics of what happened and when and why. But I think the power of Tisha B'Av is that while it marks those specific moments, it's also a day for all of the feelings that one might have had along the way, both inside those experiences to come out. It's a time for feelings to transcend each one of those events and actually to provide the common thread that connects them. And these are the feelings that most of us try not to share. This year, it will be hard not to read the Megillah and connect the feelings in that book to my own. And I think that's the power of the book of Echa is that while it describes a specific event that we should, we should think about, it also expresses feelings that many of us have right now. Echa yeshva vadad. The city of Jerusalem sits alone. And tonight, so many of us do as well. The city cries at night, and so do many of us. The city gates are empty, and so are the streets of our great, great city. The thing that makes our city, makes New York itself, is no longer there. In so many ways, it is empty, and we are all in our homes. And so while Tisha B'Av is not coronavirus and coronavirus is not Tisha B'Av, the feelings that it evokes when we see, when we are confronted with and from the inside, they feel really familiar. And we ask, how could this be happening? Why are so many alone? How can we hold on to hope in this time? And Echa's answers to this question might not be our own, but the feelings the book evokes, at least for me, are very familiar. At the end of the book, there's a twist. There's a different kind of emotion. Take us back, O Lord, to yourself and let us come back. 
renew our days of old, Hashivenu Adonai Elecha Venashuva, Chadesh Yamenu Kekedem. And that expresses a different emotion, but also I think a common trope for this time, that hope that we can return. We know that things won't be as they were, and neither will we, we won't be the same either. But that hope of return, of return to a time of safety, of feeling safe, a return to a time of being together, a return of a time to not be doing this on computer. We know we all have a ways to go before we are outside the experience. We are still inside of it, feeling all of the feelings. And now in the middle, we must find ways to repair what is broken in our country, our world, our lives. Tonight we feel and tomorrow we think, but as Tisha B'Av comes to an end, we need to challenge ourselves. What is something I can do right now to fix and mend? Where can I write that check? Who can I call? What's the thing of beauty that I can offer the world? Where can I bring order to my own world so that things will feel a little more in control as Tisha B'Av ends? What needs my needle and thread this year? I hope that even now, even at the beginning of Tisha B'Av, that we can catapult ourselves to the end of the Book of Eicha and to the end of the holiday and feel that sense of, of renewal. Chadesh Yamenu Kekenem, renew our days as of old. This year, none of us are pilgrims to a world turned upside down. We read Eicha from inside Judah inside Jerusalem, inside the destroyed temple. And we feel the tear in our hearts. But hopefully we can also feel something else, the stirrings of return and of rebirth, the anticipation of seeing Jerusalem being rebuilt before our eyes in peace, the vision of the world, where once again we'll be able to sit together. It will be so good to be able to sit together once again.